Hello, this is Dr. Kasim Almashat, a registered psychologist at the Center for Mindfulness Canada in North of Vancouver. I wanted to share with you some reflections that I've had over the last week about loss. Now, loss is quite a big topic, and this video is not a how-to uh, work through a loss, um, nor is there a formula in working with loss. We know that uh, people experience loss differently, process loss differently, and that's just part of uh, the human experience. Loss also ebbs and flows. It's not something we uh, just get to and it's over, so to speak. So it's a big topic, but um, I wanted to share just uh, kind of a, a slice, so to speak, of my experience uh, from last week. And last week, I heard um, that the near and dear family friend uh, passed away. And while we know intellectually we are um, mortal beings, we know intellectually that uh, part of living, part of being human, is we will lose uh, whether family or friends or pets. Um, it's part of what is natural uh, in terms of life. Intellectually, we know that. Um, but emotionally, is a whole different thing. So as I discovered that the loss of his uh, family friend, there's uh, different emotions that come up of, um, no, not him. No. Like, could he have been uh, spared from that? Could he, uh, is there a way we undo this? Um, and noticing this, um, not wanting, not wanting him to be uh, gone, wanting him to be physically still around with us. A couple of things uh, have uh, really come up for me since then. And uh, looking at it through the lens of mindfulness and looking at my particular experience, which uh, may or may not be what um, you have gone through, but just as, as one person who's experiencing loss and uh, being awake to it, aware with it, present with it as it arises. And all the emotions that it brings up. I noticed, um, even at the funeral of this uh, family friend, uh, this, this natural emotions arising while we are uh, wearing masks, just because of uh, COVID-19 and um, noticing how um, there's a sense of wanting to be strong for this family friend of your family. And it's such a cultural norm. I just have to be strong. And somehow we don't give ourselves a permission just to allow tears to arise. And noticing how tears are such a natural part of the grieving process of honoring someone doesn't mean we have to shed tears but if tears arise then that's just part of what's arising that is what is here that's what mindfulness really invites us to do is embrace welcome and have compassion to what arises in our own experience so i really had to turn to that as i notice emotions arise and um, tears coming down when I wasn't expecting them, when in, a, in moments when I was talking to the son of this family friend who uh, passed away. Now, I didn't want those tears. I wanted just to speak with them and um, allowing that just to be. Um, and I reflected afterwards how actually our body knows. It has this natural mechanism for grieving part of the healing and it's not something we just turn on off it just arises and finding a way to have compassion to our hurting heart a compassion uh, to this storm that comes in for us whether we have the chance to be at the service of someone uh, at their funeral or maybe not 
maybe they're distant or we're not able to go to their uh, funeral. What also came up for me is this, um, my experiences of loss and how a loss can be a reminder of our losses in the past. And it actually took me back to um, how I anticipated uh, with worries and, and fears. What, would ha- what if something happens to my parents? And I remember that conversation about 10 years before my father passed away. I remember it vividly, this uh, conversation that I had of, well, what if, what if something happens to them? How, how will I go on? How, how will life be? I can't even imagine. Um, how will we get through it if something happens to my father? And um, as I look back, I, I notice how much time the mind really wanted to go there, even when he was healthy, even when he's healthy. And not that these thoughts really prevented him from, uh, or protected him, but somehow the mind dwells and anticipates. And it's really not helpful because it takes us away from just being with that person, enjoying their, while they are with us. And then really going through the actual loss of my father in uh, 2015, um, having to be present was perhaps um, one of the most healing aspects of my experience, like really being there, being there for my mother, being there for myself, being there for my emotions, just being present as those moments unfolded and finding some stability within me to allow that experience, this human experience that no one is exempt from, and holding it with compassion. And I remember one of the actual things that I did on that day, on the, in 2015, um, on the service, on the day of the service, um, funeral of my fathers, I actually meditated that day before going to the funeral service. And it just allowed for me just to honor, allow, uh, with open arms, this this experience of being human. And um, the open arms, this offering of love to him, this honoring of him, uh, and being there with, with family, and knowing this is how it is. And knowing it is okay to have pain. It's okay to have those emotions that come up. And somehow, being there through it, looking back five years after, how would I have imagined? There's no way I could have predicted how I would have been able to get through it. But there's some trusting in our capacity, knowing grief, loss is natural and preparing for it too much in advance in a way uh, doesn't help but pretending it will not happen also doesn't help avoiding even thinking nope nothing will happen to anyone we ever love um, is also not a reality so this is kind of a balance that mindfulness um, invites us to do is um, this is how it is how can we present with the people that we uh, cherish in our lives Um, and knowing it's not permanent loss reminds us of impermanence the nature of impermanence and it brings a sense of pause life just pauses and we notice how wow We get so busy with doing and catching up and all the things that keep us up at night and the worries and the upsetness. Wow. And just in a flash, we notice. It awakens us. It awakens us to live. 
this is what mindfulness has really helped me with is um, being with the pain to awaken to living, to honoring the emotions and living life, this precious life, these precious moments that will not come back, living and being in them. And in the process, having compassion not just for us, but to all of our humans, knowing we are not alone. You are not alone. There's someone that's experiencing a recent loss right now. There's always going to be someone who's experienced loss all around the planet. We are not alone. So can we have that compassion to others and also compassion to ourselves when we have a memory of a loved one who was who we lost? And what if the memory of someone we lost brings up pain or upsetness? Maybe the person that uh, we lost brought us pain. But dwelling in it can really spiral the grief and gets us stuck in it but maybe just wishing that being, wishing them well, with compassion, as they are no longer with us, and compassion to our hearts, so we don't dwell in whatever, whatever narrative it triggers within us. I hope you find this uh, video helpful. It is not an easy topic, but it's a human topic. And there's no way around. There's no short-circuiting this topic. Um, I will likely make more videos in the future about different aspects of loss. Until then, you can visit my website for upcoming programming and events. Thank you. May your moments be filled with ease, and may you be present with as many of them. Thank you.